Testing one, two, three. Warning, the following video may contain adult language and themes. Your discretion is strongly advised. If you have a problem with this, stop playing this video now. Five, four, three, two, one. You had your chance to back out. No turning back now. Hey, what's up, everybody? I just got done watching Hell Knight from 1981. It is rated R. It's categorized under horror thriller. And... It's kind of an underrated gem. I would call it that. It's not a masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a fairly decent Friday the 13th ripoff. So basically, this movie starts out in a sort of Animal House style movie. It takes place in a fraternity, at least the beginning does, and it's a huge party, and they call it Hell Night for some reason. I think it's because people are inducted into the fraternities or something. They have to pass a test. I don't know if that's an official fraternity or and sorority term, but yeah, it's called Hell Knight. And yeah, it starts out like Animal House. So we get introduced to the main characters. It's a huge party and there's a whole bunch of people there. It opens with, with a girl screaming like she's being murdered, but then it just turns out she's being like sprayed with water or something in this party where everybody's making out and stuff. And <laughs> it was pretty, it was, uh, it felt, yeah, it felt like a stereotypical college movie at first. And we're introduced to the main characters. One of them, I think, is the head of the fraternities, and he's sort of a cocksure ladies' man, I guess. Then he has his little sidekick, which is like a nerdy kid. I don't remember the names of the characters. I'm really bad with names. And I don't. I didn't recognize any of the actors either. I think I'm pretty educated on the actors out there. But I didn't recognize any of these. Yeah, and so there's the cocksure head of the, head of the fraternities. And he has a dorky little sidekick. And then he has like his, I think, girlfriend who's a little risque. Um... And then there's four people who are being inducted into fraternities and sororities. One of them is from England, and she and she's I thought she was the hot one of the hottest women in this movie, uh, which isn't to say she's really hot, but you know she's 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 doable. Then there was the main protagonist girl, who's again she's sort of the innocent little pedal, you know the stereotypical one. And then there's two guys. One of them is pretty rich. And he really resembles Jared um, Jared Leto. I think that's his name. That's the actor's that he represent. He, he really resembles Jared Leto, in my opinion. Um, and the other one is this surf blonde surfer guy who's dressed up as Robin Hood. And they're wearing costumes. Did I? I, did, I guess I forgot to mention that in this party. And so it starts off like Animal House, and there's not really a horror elements to be seen for a good part of the movie, the beginning, and then. The, um, it, it comes time for the induction ceremony, and they have to pass this test. They go to this mansion where they all ride out there in cars, you know, all these partying kids, and the four people, you know, new people are going to be inducted, and they have to pass this test. They have to stay overnight in this in this creepy old house, and uh, the leader of the fraternities, the really cocksure guy, explains to them that a recluse, a really rich recluse, used to live up there, and 12 years ago... He murdered his whole family because he couldn't stand living with, living with them because all his children were deformed freaks. And he killed all of them, but but they never found one of the bodies. So it's a typical setup for a horror movie. So yeah, uh, and there's a huge gate around this whole house because, and it's very secluded because he was a rich millionaire and he liked his privacy. And so they lock the four of them in there overnight. They put a lock on the gate and the cocksure fellow gives four, the four people a gun with a bullet with bullets in it and says that if you you can chicken out and leave the house but you have to shoot open the gate so everybody leaves and the four people spend the night there now the cocksure head of the fraternities his girlfriend and his dorky sidekick come back to play tricks on the four people staying there you know to sort of rile them up and they, they um, are going to use, like, spooky tricks on them, and they put uh, speakers all over the house and stuff. And I guess I'm spoiling a little bit too much of this, and I really don't want to do that, because I really, I thought this movie was pretty good. Yeah, uh, there's surprisingly, so so it, it turns into a horror movie, eventually, because they're staying over at this house, and I think you can start guessing that people start dying off, you know, I don't think I'm spoiling much there. 
But the one thing that um, was kind of weird about this horror movie that I've seen in other horror movies is that the the girl protagonist who's being inducted, one of the four people, she was played off as being this really hot girl. But she's not really that hot. She's sort of hot. But I've noticed that in a lot of horror movies. They say, oh man, what a looker. And she's not really that hot. I thought the the uh, out of the four people being inducted that the English woman was way hotter. But uh, the English woman falls for the the surfer guy and the pedal the soft delicate pedal girl who's not really that hot <laughs> falls for the Jed jared leto look like and obviously you can tell what happens from there some clothes are taken off but you know surprisingly there's not a lot of nudity in this movie in fact i don't think there was any which is kind of weird because you know it's it's a college movie you know it's and i, I can't remember if animal house had nudity but this sure felt like it should. It could have used a little nudity, a little bit more. The violence, and there's violence, but it's not. It's not that grotesque. It, it, they're pretty good special effects, though. I would say this is a hidden gem. It's at least as good as the first Friday the Thirteenth movie. Now, this movie came out one year after the first Friday the Thirteenth, and it's one of the several movies, horror movies, that were very decent, very good. Friday the Thirteenth ripoffs. And I actually don't know if you could call this a Friday the 13th ripoff because it came off came out a year later. So it had to have been in development at least, you know, from 1980, which is when uh, uh, Friday the 13th came out. But anyway, uh, it's one of the many horror movies that I feel should have at least got as many sequels as Friday the 13th because it was a pretty interesting concept. And yeah, I'd say check this out. It's The music's pretty good. It's not very memorable. Uh, the cinematography is pretty good, really good lighting, it has a really good atmosphere. Probably not as suspenseful as it could have been. Sometimes the actors kind of overact and uh, play up the scary, the scared as shit role a little too much. They they act really like like they have the shit scared out of them when it's really bad, kind of bad acting. Um, but yeah, this, and, and uh, I, I checked this one out, it's called Hell Knight. And I guess it, 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 uh, it sort of does well in in the exploitation category and sort of is a little bit more artistic than more horror, most horror movies. Um, I, I kind of wish it done a little bit more of the exploitation aspect by maybe putting a little bit of nudity because I mean it could have used a little bit of that but still it's a pretty good movie. Uh, I give it about 2.5 to 3 out of 5. It's it's pretty solid film. Actually I'd probably lean more towards 3 out of 5. It, it kind of deserves that. I, I would say check this movie out and if I had watched this as a kid I think I would have a lot more respect for it um, because I could see how you could latch on to this nostal nostalgically. It's uh, it's very memorable. Uh, I guess the villain's not as memorable as he could have been. It's just kind of a generic mutant freak or something. <laughs> it's pretty much a ripoff of, of uh, Jason. But anyway, so yeah, check out check it out. It's called Hell Knight. It's a pretty good movie. Peace.